Morning, dude. Morning, dude. You know the next film learning is the 199th episode. Really? Yeah. We gonna do something special? Hmm. What are we gonna do? Ugh, well, for starters, you could have a mint because your morning breath is stanky. It does taste kind of funky. Seriously, dude, did you have a dog turd sandwich before you walked out here? Well, since you're being such a douche about it, have a big sample, Doug. <sighs> Gross. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning you good. And can you believe I've said that 199 times? It just makes you want to say, My God. Damn right. And no doubt you've seen the start of the episode since you're at this part of the video. I mean, I do. So let's just check out some requests. So as you can see, a crap load of you asked for a canary cry slash sonic scream effect from Arrow. And finally, that's what we're doing today. Now in order to complete this effect, you need to do your best impression of a sonic scream slash canary cry, which may or may not, and I mean may, make you look like a complete idiot. <sighs> you also need to head to filmlearning.com slash downloads and download a black siren slash canary cry pack which contains that Cinema 4D file, as well as an After Effects project file. Now there has been a few different versions of the Canary Cry slash Sonic Scream over the years in the Arrowverse. Funnily enough, the first Canary Cry didn't actually have any effects at all, it was just Laurel going. And it looked kind of awkward. Hello all my fans on the YouTube and the Facebook. And then it stepped up to this weird circle thing coming out, so I've just sort of made an amalgam of all of those things rather than just doing one of them. Now guys, just a quick warning here, if you don't have Cinema 4D standalone, aka not Cinema 4D Lite, the actual full version of Cinema 4D, you won't be able to open the Cinema 4D file because it does actually contain a particle simulation, which isn't actually a part of Cinema 4D Lite. So I do highly encourage you to either grab the student edition of Cinema 4D, which is actually the full version for free, or you can grab a demo of Cinema 4D down the link in the description. Now, once you've got all that, let's get to work, shall we? Okay guys, so here we are in After Effects, but don't you get comfy. Don't you get comfy, because we ain't staying here for long. We have some Cinema 4D particles to make. So our first step is right here, exactly what I've done. I've got my shot, set up in a comp, all ready to go. And all we have here, if we check out a preview, is my bald noggin pretending to do whatever this is. I think I'm doing some sort of siren effect. So now it's time to render this out as an image sequence to import into Cinema 4D. So let's hit Control M to add it to the render queue. From there, we're gonna click on the lossless settings and from the drop down menu, let's select Photoshop sequence. From there, let's hit OK and designate a save location. You'll also notice you have the option to save this sequence in a subfolder. So just go ahead and do that. Once that's done, let's hit the render button. All done. Now let's open up our Cinema 4D file by selecting our file, heading to edit and click edit original. Once again, I'm going to say this guys, if you do not have the full version of Cinema 4D and you have just Cinema 4D Lite, this file won't open. But don't fret, because your boy still has you covered. I'm looking after you. So here we are in Cinema 4D. Now as you can see, I have an emitter, and within that emitter, I have two objects, a torus and a cylinder. These are the two objects that make up our sonic blast. And if I hit the play button, you can see a wave of rings, and within those rings, you can see these chubby marshmallow looking cylinders. And if I hit the render button, you can also see there's quite a bit of displacement on the polygons of those cylinders. This will help give it a bit more detail when we composite this in After Effects later on. So let's firstly set up this shot by opening up our material here marked BG. We'll then go into the color settings right at the top here. And this is where we'll import our image sequence. Click load image from the drop down menu and hit OK and just hit no there on that pop-up, just for no reason, it doesn't really do anything. Let's then click on that image and then head into the animation settings. Then all we have to do is click the calculate button and bam, Cinema 4D will now find the rest of your image sequence and we have ourselves a video in the background of our shot. Okay, so now if we add a camera and we move the camera around, the background remains in place and is static, which is a good thing because in this case, we're trying to make that particle burst come out of our actor by adjusting where the particles come from, rather than the other way around and trying to match the particle burst to a specific camera movement. 
So let's just hit play and get some particles out. There we go. And then we'll pause that and we'll move the camera around until we're happy with where they're coming out of, the placement. Feel free to hit that play button and preview this shot as many times as you like until you're happy with the positioning. Now, if you've been paying attention, you'll notice I have a little problem when I hit the play button. My face and my entire head moves downwards when I start to scream. But my particle stream doesn't follow that. So here's how we fix that. Let's head to the point where our particle first starts to release here. And let's grab our emitter and move it into the right place and hit the record keyframe button right here. We'll then move ahead a few frames where I settle on a position down here and we'll move the emitter down as well, matching it to the same position as before. We'll then hit the record keyframe button once more. If we move around a bit more like I do, just add as many keyframes as you like and the end result should look like this. As you can see, the particles now react to the movement of my actor. They start firing up here and then they adjust to flow down here. Pretty cool, huh? Now, believe it or not, we are done in Cinema 4D as far as animation's concerned and it's time to render that out. Or you can just save it and head back into After Effects and import it there if you prefer to render with inside After Effects. But I don't, so I'm gonna render here. So here's how we do that. Firstly, we need to remove the background layer from the render, and that's as simple as turning it off like so. Just double click until this bottom dot is red. Now, we're gonna render just the rings to start with, so let's turn off the cylinders. Bam. We can now open the render settings and designate a save location right here. Everything else is already set up for you. So let's call this one, say, Cry Rings. Close that out, and then we'll hit the render button. Once that's done, we'll head back to our object manager, turn on the cylinders and turn off the rings. Head back to our render settings once more and let's name this one say Cry Puff. Once again, close that out and hit the render button. Right, that's our 3D animation all done. Let's head back to After Effects. Back in After Effects and it's time to put all this together. And luckily for us, it's pretty easy really. Firstly, let's import our files like I've already done right here. And if you have the download pack, but you don't have Cinema 4D, but you still wanna follow along, I've included these animations in here so you can just import them as well. So let's head back to our footage comp and from there, let's add ourselves an adjustment layer to our comp like so. And from there, we're going to drop our rings layer on top of all of that. From there, we're going to right click on our rings and pre-compose it. And let's name this ring displace and hit OK. And then we're gonna turn that bad boy off. Next, let's grab the adjustment layer, head to effect, distort and add ourselves a displacement map. Let's set the source file to our pre-comp layer and set both the vertical and horizontal displacement to alpha. Now, if we check out a preview, it looks pretty good, but it's a little harsh. So let's soften it up a touch. To do that, we'll open up the pre-comp and with the layer selected, we'll head to effect, blur and sharpen and select directional blur. From there, let's set the blur angle to around 90 and we'll up that amount to around 20. That's a bit softer. Now, if we head back and preview that, it's looking much better. From there, let's start to add some depth here. Let's add another version of our rings clip in the project menu, done. Let's then firstly hit T to bring up opacity and we're gonna knock this bad boy down to 12%. So it's almost barely visible. Now I know that looks like crap, but just wait, just wait. Let's then head to effect, blur and sharpen and add a little directional blur. Let's set this to around 80 and then crank the amount up to say 70. Next, let's head to effect, stylize and add CC glass. Now feel free to go nuts and experiment here guys, see what works, but my personal settings are softness 48, the displacement set to 100. In shading, I set the ambient to 24. I'll also set the light color to a pale blue. If we check out a preview, you can now see we've got something coming together. But as always, we ain't done yet. Let's then duplicate that layer, 
change the transfer mode to lighten and crank that opacity back up to 100. Let's get rid of the directional blur for starters and replace that with a CC radial fast blur and drag that up above our CC glass. Let's then set the center point to way off frame, say here, and crank the amount to 100. From there, let's, you know what, I'm keeping that in. From there, let's head down and modify the CC glass effect. Let's set the softness to 84.6 and the displacement to minus 100. We'll finish that off by changing the light color to a darker blue. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now, we want to fade this in slowly so it's not like a harsh jolt. So let's hit T to bring up opacity. Let's scrub along the timeline to just after the effect starts. Hit the stopwatch and crank it down to zero. We'll then move ahead once the burst starts to come out and then we'll crank it back up to 100. That way it feels like it powers up after the initial blast and bursts out. And our last step, yes, last step, is to bring in our cry puff. And funnily enough, we're gonna repeat the same steps as our first displacement layer, kind of. Let's turn it off and pre-compose it like so. Name it puff displacement, I don't know. Let's then head up and add a new adjustment layer. Stay up there, head to effect, distort, and add a yet another displacement map. And we'll set the puff to our source layer. I'm then gonna set the horizontal and vertical to luminance, and let's check out a preview of that. Nice, and that's our final shot done. Now guys, one thing I will mention is that the directional blur position will change depending on what angle you choose. Now what I mean by that is, right now we're at a three quarter angle, but if you were say on a side angle, then you'd change the directional blur completely. It'd be going straight one way, like 45 degrees or 90 degrees. So make sure you do have a play with that directional blur angle. Oh, I almost forgot one thing. We've also got to add some camera shake. So let's just highlight everything. There we go. We'll then right click and hit pre-compose and call this one, I don't know, final. And then we're going to make sure we're on the first frame. Then we're going to head over to effects and presets and type shake. And all I'm going to do is grab the Red Giant Universe Legacy Camera Shake. We'll just drag and drop that on. And we'll set it back down to zero and make sure motion blur is enabled. We'll then move down until our blast first comes out. Add a keyframe. Then we'll scrub along until the blast is completely out. And then I'll up it to two. That's a little bit harsh. Let's say one. And let's check out a preview of that. And that, my friends, is another shot done. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. <laughs> so guys, that's my take on the Black Siren Sonic Scream slash Canary Cry from Arrow and Flash. Once again, I know it's not 100% screen accurate, but I'm pretty happy with the end result. And when you apply it to your footage, I think you'll be pretty happy too. Now guys, if you can see that number back there, we are about to hit 90,000 subscribers. So I do have a 90,000 subscriber celebration video, which is just a little skit that'll be coming out later this week. So keep an eye out for that. Make sure you turn that notification bell on because YouTube isn't putting out all the videos to the subscriber feed. But for now guys, that is my time. If you did enjoy this video, please smash that like button. I really do appreciate it. And if you're not subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button right down there and turn that notification bell on so you don't miss a single film in an episode. We've got two other episodes over here. We've got a playlist up here. My social media crap is above my head with the Facebook and the Twitter and the whatnot. But until I see you again for our 200th episode of Film Learning, keep learning!